A couple chapters ago, we introduced factorials in the video on enumerative combinatorics. More recently, we used expressions containing factorials to describe the probability distribution of the total numbers of heads in sequences of coin tosses. Statistical aspects of physical systems are sometimes modeled as though they arose from the independent fluctuations of a large number of random variables. To help us work with expressions containing factorials of large numbers, this video introduces Stirling's approximation. Stirling's approximation is an approximation for n factorial when n is a large number much greater than unity. Recall that n factorial denotes the product of factors starting out from n and descending by steps of 1 all the way down to 1, meaning n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, dot dot dot, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. The strategy of this rough derivation is to relate n factorial to an integral. Integration is understood in terms of summation. To obtain a sum, take the natural log of both sides, and recall that the natural log of a product is the sum of the natural logs of the multiplied factors. We obtain natural log of n plus natural log of n minus 1, and so forth, down to natural log of 3 plus natural log of 2 plus natural log of 1. To conserve visual real estate, we recognize that the natural log of 1 equals 0. Multiply each term in this sum by 1. As we will explain, this sum equals the area of the golden rectangular blocks arranged under the yellow plot of the natural log of x versus x. The height of the rectangle at the right is natural log of n because its left edge is placed at the horizontal position x equals n. We have drawn all of the blocks with the same width, 1. Thus, the area of this rectangle is the product natural log of n times 1. As another example, the height of the rectangle at the left is natural log of 2 because its left edge is placed at the horizontal position x equals 2. Because, again, we have drawn all of the blocks with width equal to 1, this rectangle has width 1 and its area is the product natural log of 2 times 1. To calculate the sum, we add up all of the areas of all of the rectangles. By shifting the rectangles together to the left by a step of one half, we can see that the area of the golden rectangles approximates the red area under the plot of the natural log of x from x equals three halves to x equals n plus one half. As indicated by blue wedges, the left half of each golden rectangle protrudes above the natural log curve. As illustrated in green, the right half of each golden rectangle falls below the natural log curve. The red area under the natural log curve is approximately equal to the area of the golden blocks because the areas of the blue and green discrepancies approximately cancel out. To be more precise, we recognize that the plot of the natural log of x becomes shallower as x increases. The plot of the natural log of x has downward curvature. The areas of the blue triangles are thus larger than the areas of the corresponding green triangles. Especially by looking at the first few blocks illustrated toward the left, we see that the red area under the natural log curve is an underestimate of the area of the golden rectangles. For larger values of x toward the right, the blue and green wedges become smaller, the differences between them less noticeable, and the area of each golden rectangle more accurately approximated by the corresponding red area under the plot of the natural log of x. When n is large, many of the golden rectangles described by the sum are well approximated by their associated portions of the red area. We approximate the natural log of n factorial, which again is the area of the golden rectangles, as equal to the area under the plot of the natural log of x from x equals 3 halves to x equals n plus 1 half. This is the integral from x equals 3 halves to n plus half of natural log on x dx. In order to express this integral in terms of functions we have already encountered, we seek a mathematical object whose derivative is the natural log. We are trying to solve the integral. As a first guess, we consider the product of a first term x and a second term natural log on x. To take the derivative of this product, we write down the derivative of the first term, the derivative of x is 1, multiplied by the second term natural log on x, and then add this product to the first term x multiplied by the derivative of the second term. The derivative of natural log x is 1 over x. Cancel out x upstairs and downstairs in the second product. 
it might at first appear that we have failed to find an object whose derivative is the natural log of x because the derivative of x times the natural log of x is not natural log of x as we desired but instead natural log of x plus one however by subtracting one from both sides and thus isolating the natural log of x we can solve for the integral of the natural log of x as desired integrate both sides of the equation from x equals three halves to n plus one half the second fundamental theorem of calculus states that integration is the undo button for differentiation the derivative applied to the product x times natural log on x is undone by subsequent integration thus the solution of the first integral on the right hand side of the equation is the value of x times the natural log of x evaluated at the position x equals n plus one half minus the value of x times natural log of x at the position x equals three halves the second integral contains merely the constant one and thus yields the difference quantity n plus one half minus three halves after explicitly substituting the endpoints into the first set of brackets we find that the integral from x equals three halves to n plus one half of natural log on x dx is quantity n plus one half that quantity times natural log of n plus one half minus three halves times natural log of three halves minus quantity n minus one this is the red area under the plot of the natural log of x and thus an approximation to the total area of the golden rectangles which is the natural log of n factorial to re-express this approximation in terms of n factorial rather than in terms of natural log of n factorial we take the exponential of both sides n factorial is roughly n plus one half to the n plus one half power times two thirds to the three halves power times e to the minus n times e the first pair of parentheses encloses a binomial whose first term is n and whose second term is one half factor out n to the n plus one half to leave behind the quantity one plus one over two n that quantity taken to the n plus one half power break this term into two pieces the first with power n and the second with power one half as n becomes large the square root of one plus one over two n becomes arbitrarily close to the square root of one which is itself one in the other term n becomes very large both in a denominator within the binomial and in the exponent to which the binomial is taken this factor approximates e to the one-half power multiply all of these factors together and adding the power of one half in the factor e to the one half to the power one in the factor e to the one we find that n factorial is approximated by n to the n plus one half times two thirds to the three halves times e to the minus n times e to the three halves move the constants out front the square root of the third power of two e over three has a numerical value of two point four four while the approximation we have roughly derived provides the correct behavior for n factorial for large n we have underestimated the leading coefficient when we drew blue and green wedges to indicate the discrepancies between the red and golden areas we particularly noticed that the areas of the golden rectangles to the left were underestimated by their associated portions of the red shaded area as a heuristic pretend that there exists a threshold along the x-axis that separates two categories of golden rectangles for casual discussion pretend that this is the scale break represented by the double s to the left of the threshold the area of the golden blocks is underestimated by the associated portion of the red shaded area to the right of the threshold pretend that the area of the golden blocks is instead accurately represented by its corresponding red area for large values of n the sum that is the natural log of n factorial varies only by virtue of varying the number of blocks included to the right of the threshold the blocks to the left along with the artifacts of their underestimated areas are included without change this corresponds to a constant subtractive offset for the natural log of n factorial which through exponentiation corresponds to a constant underestimated multiplicative coefficient for n factorial by referring to a more professional derivation not included in this tutorial one replaces the leading coefficient with the square root of two pi meaning two point five one in place of two point four four 
For large values of n, n factorial approximately equals the square root of 2 pi times n, times n to the n, times e to the minus n. This is Stirling's approximation. In this video, we used the integral of the natural log to obtain an approximation for n factorial for large values of n. Stirling's approximation will help us in the next video, where we provide an example of how a Gaussian probability distribution can arise in a system.